Hey, it's Chronic here on Rock 104.5, Reno's Rock Station, hanging out with Steve Hofstetter, who's performing at the Laugh Factory inside the Silver Legacy all weekend long, doing two shows on Friday and Saturday. Steve, thanks for stopping by the Dot Studio, man. It's my pleasure. I love performing in any casino town. It's the best. Because, Why is that? Because there are so many wonderful shows, like not just mine, but there are free shows if you know what you're doing. Like, oh, yeah. Just go to the lobby of a casino at 3.30 in the morning and watch people. <laughs> That's the, I call that show Four is Dressed Like Tens. That's a great show. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing to hang out and people watch in the casinos here. Now, I, I had asked you a little earlier, this isn't your first trip to Reno, but it's your first time here performing, right? Yeah, so I did uh, I did a show at University of uh, Nevada, Reno, mm-hmm. um, a couple years ago. But this is my first time uh, with a show open to the public, because that was students only. Right. So this is my first time where, you know, got to mix and mingle and anybody could come. And it's been great. People have been, you know, driving in from all over the place, just because I'm not up in this area much. Mm-hmm. So it's been a ton of fun. I like it, man. You said you actually went to uh, Tahoe today as well. Yeah, I went to Tahoe this morning. I figured uh, this is the last time that the weather will be nice for the next eight months. So Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you like skiing or snowboarding. The winter's pretty fabulous around here, too. Uh, I am not the skiing and snowboarding type. Uh, okay. I do not have the coordination for that. <laughs> I've been skiing twice, and I should... I said that wrong. I have been falling twice. <laughs> and uh, I'm really good at going down the mountain. Not straight or with any control or Correct. upright. <laughs> but you put me in that top. I'll get down there. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Now, you were just saying a little earlier, too, you, you've got your, your dog here. So you're kind of yeah. wandering around the grimy streets of downtown <laughs> Reno late at night. It's uh, it's definitely being out at like 1230 or 1 on a weekday. Mm-hmm. Because I, you know, I try to walk him last minute before I go to bed, otherwise he's going to wake me up super early. Right. And so I, you know, I'm, I'm a comic, I'm a night owl, so, you know, I'll be up, you know, 12 or 1, no problem. And uh, on a Tuesday, that's not a, <laughs> it's not a good time to be up downtown. <laughs> it's not just walking around. I literally, like yesterday, mm-hmm. there was this, like, scary looking dude. Okay. And there was another person, like, across the street where, because he was across the street, and there was another person that was like smaller than me mm-hmm. and I was I literally had the thought like oh thank god he'll probably attack him before he attacks me <laughs> <laughs> like what a jerk thing to think it's totally that bear mentality you know go Absolutely. hiking in the woods with someone fatter than you because if a bear chases you they'll get them first right I don't have to outrun the bear I have to outrun you <laughs> but meanwhile I'm sitting there being like I'm a 6'4 dude wearing a hood walking a pit bull and I'm scared. Like, what a wuss. What a wuss am I? Well, I have a pit bull, too, and yeah. he's a big wuss. He barks big. He would probably bite if he got a hold of you, but yeah. he is the biggest cuddle animal ever. Most of them are. And mine's actually, so mine is like the, the cousin of the pit, the mm-hmm. Staffy. Staffordshire. So, yeah, mm-hmm. so he's definitely smaller, but he's got that face. Mm-hmm. You know, he's got that pit bull The face. muscular head. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That He's like a potato with feet. He's awesome. <laughs> um, but so today I was walking around Tahoe with him. And uh, this this woman just came up, this like it was a woman and her husband, and she just came up and just like almost put him in a headlock, mm-hmm. like just like to try to like hug Love him or whatever. Him, yeah. Just yeah. And I just yelled stop at her, mm-hmm. and she like gave me this weird look, like what am I doing wrong? And I go, you don't just walk up to a strange dog, <laughs> he, and, you know? She's like, what? I go, cause he'll bite you. And he's like on the smaller side, so she like very like, oh, is he gonna bite me? I'm like, yeah. If I stab you with a small knife, is it is it's it still adorable? Gonna hurt. <laughs> Who's bleeding a little bit? Yeah. Who's bloody? Who's bloody? <laughs> what an idiot! And on that note, I want to, dude. How is it that you get like some of the most insane hecklers out of any videos I have seen on the internet? I think I think a lot a lot of comics get them, but I record everything. You know, I and not only that. I mean, there are a couple of reasons. I mean, A, I record everything, Mm -hmm. and I perform for an hour 300 times a year. Yeah. So, like, there might be some comics who will be like, I don't get many hecklers. It's like, yeah, because you do seven minutes 50 times. Right. You know, like, I do that in a week. Mm -hmm. So people have more time also performing less, so people will be drunker. Right. Um, I have a tendency (laughs) when someone yells something out or even says something a little bit quiet that I hear – most of my clips start with me going, what did you just say? You're right. <laughs> because I don't let it slide. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other reason is I tend to do, talk politics. You know, I am- You like to in, be controversial. I'm in Reno, Nevada doing- I've got a three-minute bit now about gun control mm-hmm. and about how people who are against all gun control are logically dumb. Okay. And uh, so I just lost a few people who are going to come to the show <laughs> listening to this. Um, no, but actually, but if you listen to the bit, it's impossible to argue with. Mm-hmm. Like it's the logic of it is completely sound. But 
you still do that bit and someone's a little bit drunk and hears something they don't agree with and then like there was one woman that yelled out uh, I had said something about how you know I I don't support Trump mm-hmm. and you know and I'm a New Yorker I, I think we have of all people we have the right to we've known who he is for <laughs> quite some time amen to that <laughs> exactly. I grew up with him uh-huh. and not with him right. I mean uh, you know hearing I, about him and dealing with right. the people that had to deal I with him I grew up at the bottom of the hill mm-hmm. and so uh, <laughs> like I, you know I, I'm well aware of what he's capable of and so I mentioned something about it and this woman yelled out you're an idiot and I was like <laughs> All right, tell me why. Tell me why I'm an idiot. You mm-hmm. can tell me you disagree with me, but of all things, don't call me an idiot. And I, I told her that, like, because I'm a progressive comic, mm-hmm. and, like, she should know that before she comes to the show. Right. And so, like, I told, I told her, I said, you're the person who goes to a store, buys a shirt, and gets mad at it for not being pants. <laughs> Like, you can't blame the shirt. It's supposed to be a shirt. Where Why you, aren't you pants? Where do you come up with you some of these be pants. logical analogies, man? You kill I wanted me. Pants. Uh, it's just how I've always spoken. I don't know. It's a weird, I speak in metaphor. It's it's bizarre. But you do it so well. You Thank have you. crafted this art. <laughs> I, I don't even know where to begin because I have sat and watched some of your stuff. And I, I'm a DJ as well. Obviously, I deal with the public. So we're constantly under fire and criticism by yeah. people that probably should think about the whole rocks and glass houses things before they start Absolutely. slinging stones. But watching you uh, watching you disassemble some people's arguments is, is an art form. Well, that's, I mean, and that's the fun part. It's that, you know, it's, it's showing people, it's not I disagree with you, it's that you're completely incorrect. Right. Like someone, just the other night, uh, someone yelled out, I just put this, uh, I just put this clip up on my YouTube. Um, I have this bit where it's a rhetorical question. Every question a comic asks is a rhetorical question, unless they go, hey, buddy. Mm -hmm. You know, every question is rhetorical. So I said, uh, I I was talking about how, you know, some cops get into the position of power to abuse the power of the position. And I said, but there is a group of people, I was like, there is a group of people that, you know, are worse than that. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, like, you know who's worse? And the answer to that in my bit was flight attendants, which is kind of funny to put them (laughs) in the same category. And then I have a story about that happening. Um, it's a misdirection. It's right. a rhetorical question. But this guy yells out, comics? And so then I was like, okay, now tell me why. <laughs> Back that up. <laughs> comics, they get in a position of the power just to abuse the power of the position. Like, no, comics get in the position of power to use the power of the position. But abusing power is going beyond what you are allotted. Correct. And so he had, he like, he just immediately was like, no, 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 I don't have anything. And I told him, I was like, so you just said words in a row and hope that they meant something. <laughs> Uh, cognitive dis- the way you have uh, outlined people's cognitive dissonance at the same time as like making them rethink their whole position. I don't, I don't know if there's a better way to kind of blast through some of the ideology that people have on you know some of their most deeply held beliefs yeah. if you don't almost put it in, in a funny way. If you can't make them laugh at themselves about it, they're almost never going to rethink it. And that's the trick. And that's something that like I don't need people to agree with me to come to my show. Like, yeah, I'm progressive, but I'm reasonable about it. Mm-hmm. And so if, you know, my favorite thing that someone could say to me after a show is I didn't agree with anything you said, but damn, you were funny. And that's great because that means that someone who doesn't agree with me is willing to listen to dialogue. Correct. And I'm willing to listen to anybody who doesn't agree with me also. Mm-hmm. But cognitive dissonance, that is the term. If the listeners are unfamiliar, look this up because that is the term. I learned that term about seven years ago. I will never forget when I did because mm-hmm. it changed my life. Yeah, me that too. term explains everything. It is basically, if you're unfamiliar, the term means... Uh, I'm trying to think of the most succinct way to explain this. If it's something that you hold in your belief system so, like, it's been ingrained into your childhood and you're raising that it has become your belief system, that people can put forth factual information that no matter how factual and Mm -hmm. obviously truthful it is, you will still not believe it because it goes against the thought process that you were trained in. Absolutely. And the best example I've seen of this was not political. It was, I was at a wedding, Mm -hmm. and the band was horrible. (laughs) So horrible that it was the topic of conversation of everyone at the wedding. Like, they played that that song, you know that, uh, that, you know, and and I don't know what I could even say on the radio. (laughs) I'll I'll do the radio edit, the, you know, damn, you a sexy, and then they did Uh chick. Right. As the, you know, and that's the radio edit of it. Mm -hmm. But there's that line where it says, uh, neighborhood whore, Mm -hmm. and they couldn't say that, so they said neighborhood store. And it was the most ridiculous, like, everyone at the dance floor at the same time just looked Stopped. over. Been like, what's wrong with you? You know, like, it was so obviously bad. So what happens? As I'm leaving, 
What does the bride do? She comes right up to us, and the first thing she says, unprovoked, is, wasn't that band amazing? <laughs> and the reason why is because if she admitted the band was bad, it would have, have made her admit, day. She would have to admit that she was bad at picking them because it was her decision. <laughs> Correct. And so she couldn't blame them because that would mean she'd have to blame herself. And I just in that moment, I was like, this explains everything in life. <laughs> it really does. It yeah. really does. <laughs> Neighborhood store. What does that even mean? I love, uh, there was, I think, an, a VH1 show that was very short-lived that actually talked about the ridiculousness of radio edits and how the yeah. songs didn't work. Oh, I it, was, it. it was hilarious. One of my, one of my favorite things. Uh, is watching because I grew up with no cable, mm-hmm. and so watching broadcast versions of like Die Hard, <laughs> Yippie Kaye, Mr. Falcon. <laughs> like, there's not even a character <laughs> named Falcon. What do you do? There, are, you could put something else in there. <laughs> Yippie Kaye, Mr. Falcon. I love it. <laughs> just the idea of like that. There's someone watching it. That there's some just. Bible thumping idiot that's watching it be like, yeah, that's more like it. That's like the movie I want. You know this movie where all kinds of people are dying and limbs are getting blown off and he's bleeding all over the place. Don't you cuss? Yeah, (laughs) you cuss. Someone came up to me before a show once and they were like, "Do you use the f word?" And I was like, "Well, no." And I never thought of using it. Now you put it in my head, and (laughs) I can't believe you would put such a vile word in my. I use the f word all the time on stage, but like, just I try. I just you know put it back on him. The idea of like. You said the same thing. <laughs> Just now, saying the F word, it's communication. You know exactly, I know what you were saying. You you know what you were saying. We both use that same word in our head. So you use that word. How dare you curse like that in front of my head? <laughs> Man, I, I'm going to be out this weekend at the Silver Legacy, so I cannot wait to come peek in on one of your shows. Now, uh, Harry over there at the Laugh Factory likes to hook up the locals. So, yeah. dudes, if you want to go out on a good date and, and actually open your mind to some interesting thoughts and have a great time, head on down to the Silver Legacy. You can get a ticket for yourself, and then you'll get a free ticket for your girl. Just don't tell her you got it for free. That's awesome. Totally <laughs> come out to the show. I'll totally get you laid. That's what's up. <laughs> They'll laugh. Uh, you know, you take full responsibility. When you leave, just be like, wasn't that show I took you to great? Don't even be like, wasn't that comic great? Because don't have them think it was me at all. It's all you. That's Come right. to the show. I will get you laid. <laughs> that is my promise to everyone listening, except people who are really gross, because then no one can help you. <laughs> but everyone else, come to the show. <laughs> Steve Hofstetter, thank you for stopping by the Rock 104.5 studio. Go see him at the Laugh Factory inside the Silver Legacy. Two shows, Friday and Saturday. One show on Sunday, and ticket links at silverlegacy.com. Thanks for having me.